Jace Land Adventures, Tennessee. Okay, this is my first attempt to build an outdoor shower using two 275 gallon water totes. Now these totes consist of four major parts, the cage, the tank, the pallet, and two metal cross members on top of the tank that attach to the cage for a total of five parts. The cross members and pallet are attached using bolts or screws. Extract those and you can separate all the parts. I only needed to take apart one tote. Of this one tote, you will only need the cage and the tank for this project. For the other parts, you can set them aside. Maybe they can be used later for something else. You will also have to take the cross members off of the lower tank. And that would be the only two parts you take out of that tank. In my tank shower version, I wanted to get the highest opening I could get for, say, a taller person. Uh, I happen to be a tall person. Uh, maybe that's why. So if you match the top of the cage to the top of the other cage, there's an extra inch or two you can get higher than if you stack the second cage on its bottom to the top of the lower cage. Now this has to deal with the, uh, the wh where you're cutting the cage for entering the shower. The cross members have a, a different gap uh, from the top and the bottom. So that's why I did it. If you look at the photo, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Okay, here in this next part, I'm trying to decide which way to enter and therefore cut an entrance way. From basically all other versions I've seen on the internet, all the entrances have been on the longer side or the deeper side. I decided to go with the shorter side and put the shower head on the other end once entering. Here I'm cutting the cage for the entryway. I cut the cage in a way that leaves a clean entry without catching on the cage to make it even more difficult to get caught on the cage. I leave a lip of the plastic tank all the way around the entrance. To cut the cage, I use a Dewalt uh, four and a half inch uh, angle grinder. It cuts it really nice and clean, no worries. Uh, afterwards, you're going to clean it all up anyway, or at least you need to. Right here, I'm measuring where you should actually cut the tank. Uh, I use a uh, a level as a straight edge and a magic marker or a sharpie and just mark down the tank straight edge and for the rounded edges or the radiuses on the corners I used a piece of wood that I had cut a radius out of on a previous project and just drew that radius and all the corners uh, of the tank that I cut that has a radius so to cut the tank, I just grab the grinder with that four and a half inch. Uh, it's a steel cutting disc. It's not a grinder. It's actually a, a, a steel cutting disc. And uh, it cuts that plastic like nobody's business. It kind of melts it in a way. It doesn't leave shreds of plastic anywhere. It, it does a really good job. And for the radius, you have to keep it... Uh, not too deep uh, and you just kind of feather in that radius until it finally cuts through that way you don't uh, go off track and cut more or less than what you need to or just an atrocious cut that shouldn't even be there all right after stacking the other tank back on top with the cage i attach the cage cages together using the hose clamps and I cut the extra off with the uh, angle grinder just to so I don't have any extra metal to get caught onto or whatever then after that I get the the level out for my straight edge and the marker and I start tracing the cuts for the upper tank uh, it being on top of the lower tank I can then trace pretty much identical uh, shape uh, cut from the uh, lower tank to the upper tank so when I cut that out they match up pretty equally okay here I have to of course take the tank back off from the lower tank to cut that plastic part out uh, I guess I put it together a little quick 
but it still needed to be uh, stern and even while I traced those in. So I guess it wasn't a bad thing. It just extra step, taking it apart, putting it back together. I'm going to have to come back and comment on the angle grinding of, you know, cutting the tank with the angle grinder. I, this is the best way. I have cut many of plastics and, uh, you know, for a, an easy job that's clean and no mu not much cleanup, the grinder is the way to go for this, for sure. Okay, we've got to put the tanks back together and back to using those hose clamps. Uh, there's only three hose clamps I use. One uh, on the very back center and then two on each side of the entrance. A little off from the entrance, but they are there. This is, these, believe it or not, the tank and the cage, they're really light. It's, I don't think it exceeds 100 pounds, the whole thing. So it's really easy to move and, and work with, uh, but it is awkward to lift as a whole if you're by yourself. So you definitely need help lifting and moving if you have to carry it somewhere. For the cleanup uh, around those edges, I have a little paint scraper. It's it's a little scraping tool for for paint painters, I guess. Um, but I use it in this plastic. It, it's a trick that I learned uh, when I used to build playgrounds for McDonald's and uh, Burger King soft play playgrounds is what they're called. Um, it's a little trick that all the guys use. It cleans that plastic up really easy. Um, you hold the uh, the the blade or the the scraper in your hand and that comes with a handle or it's a replacement blade you just hold the blade wear a glove use the blade in your hand cleans that plastic up just flawlessly all right here the next day all the extra plastic that was cut out um, i'm going to use that same plastic to create the door and the cage that was cut out is also going to be used as the door and it's basically where what you cut out of the tank is what you're going to put back for the door and what you took out for the cage is what you're going to put back for the door as well uh, i attached the cage back to the cage the, the cage that's cut out the, i attach it back to the cage using simple uh simple hinges they're about three inches tall it has three screw holes on both sides of the hinge i use the middle screw hole and for each cage part that was cut out, I have two hinges on each part, and I use sheet metal screws uh, to uh, tap back into the cage. The, the size of those sheet metal screws are three eighths, and uh, I have a picture that I'll show you, and you can see pretty much how it was done, or at least the picture will show you. Here we go. There's the picture. Um, simple that you know you're, there's only a few parts that you're going to have to add to this shower build everything else that you cut out you're going to possibly use back uh, in the build where you don't have to outsource any extra parts once I get the door uh, back connected to the cage I, I grind a little bit of the edges off with the angle grinder um, it works gets all the little burrs off of it but later I use a Makita orbital sander and it gets it real nice and smooth uh, I do not think it will cut you you would have to hit it extremely hard in a in a bad manner to make it cut you so uh, that's how I did that part and then to attach the plastic to the cage I just uh, matched it up drilled some holes through it uh, that matched around the cage cross members for the door and just use some cable ties zip tied it there and that held nicely after getting the door all connected and stuff I go back with the uh, the Dewalt uh, grinder and grind a little bit more of those edges up to make sure that they're not uh, pokey or scratchy and then next I cut some more of the extra plastic that's cut off of the tank I cut some strips uh, they're a few inches wide by 20 inches long or so. Uh, it hides the sides 
Uh, the tanks aren't symmetrical. They have a dip in them, and you can see that they leave a little gap right here in the photos. So I inserted those strips on uh, to cover those holes. You can see it in that second photo uh, that it covered it up. Uh, there's still a little bit of a, a hole on both sides. I need to figure out a way to uh, cover that up. That, that'll be, you know, no need for this video to do that. All right, so uh, next I get in there with a paint, the paint scraper again and clean up some of those edges. And then um, I guess I, I got to rivet uh, the, the two tanks together. I drill a hole from the top to the bottom and then put in some rivets. Really easy. You know, I told you the tanks are and the cage is really light, so just a few rivets. You don't need to go crazy with it. They're not going to separate. I basically just installed one in each corner. That's all it needed, really. Kind of finish up the rest of uh, the stuff before I do the plumbing. And just finish it off with that Makita orbital on those edges. Um, also, I have to add a, a lot more zip ties that hold the tank to the cage. I'll show a couple of photos. It's, ma it's just around the uh, entranceway. I found that if water sets on top, freezes, the weight of that water will sink that tank down and then you'll get these gaps. For the plumbing, I installed uh, washing machine hoses through the hole that was the drain, which is now upside down. And then on the inside, I created some contraption that created uh, the shower head and stuff. All right, this is the end of the video. I appreciate you watching it. If you liked it, like it. If you want to subscribe to my channel, subscribe. If not, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'll try to answer any questions. It's a simple build. Uh, good luck on your versions.